Hey everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. It is bright and early, a beautiful day, and I am in such a good mood because I am going to be planting things in the ground today, and I'm so excited. So uh, our last frost was February 28th, which was last Tuesday, and then that was kind of iffy because there was some frost and freezes in the forecast. Specifically last night, we had a freeze warning uh, for the Sacramento Valley, and it ex the freeze warning expired this morning at 8 a.m., and it is 8 15 right now and we didn't get anywhere near freeze at least here in davis um and we do have it's called the delta breeze we do have a, a waterway that's like southwest of us and um as the wind i guess as the wind comes over that it kind of warms at least davis up a little bit more than some of the more um the areas around here that are away from that waterway so i think that that's why we didn't get any freeze I say things like, I know what I'm talking about. I have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> but we didn't get anywhere close to freeze last night. And then looking at my 10 day forecast, the coldest thing I have is 33 degrees next Thursday. So that can definitely change. And I'm definitely taking a chance by planting stuff out right now. Um, but I'm not really planting anything that's super tender. And if it's only one day, I can run out here and I can just throw some harvest guard over my crepe myrtle garden bed, which is where I'm planting today. So there's always a risk when you plant things this time of year, um, but I'm willing to take that risk, so. <laughs> So here is the garden bed that I'm working on today. This is called my crepe myrtle garden bed because I have my crepe myrtle tree right in the middle. This garden bed gets, I would say, part sun. It kind of is different. Maybe about this half of the bed, we get the early morning east side gentle sun and then it gets shaded for the rest of the day. And then over here it's shaded in the morning, but then it gets the hot west afternoon sun. So it's kind of an interesting garden bed where you, you know, you kind of just have to figure out what's going to work um what's going to work on each side so we did have somebody come here and help us take out all the black mulch that we have so you guys can see my irrigation tubing you can kind of see how i laid it out in this garden bed i basically did the circles that are um they're attached you know like a different areas um and and this is the inline emitter tubing i think it's every 18 inches or something like that uh and i think it's working really well i think it's fine i think most things get water if i do have to extend spaghetti tubing off of it I do that like here to my bobo hydrangeas my bobo that looks like sticks right now but you can see I have a two gallon per hour emitter coming off of that right there um, so I don't think I'm gonna mess with the irrigation very much in this bed I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it's working um, but of course I will check it now that I have the mulch off and the mulch gone, it's going to be really easy to run it once I get everything planted and to check and make sure that everything's getting enough water. You can see I have all my tulip bulbs coming up. Those look really good. All here. Here are the plants that I'm planning to plant today. I got these when I went to the garden center last week with my family and I, oh, I can't wait to get these in the ground. They're so pretty. So these are just common calla lilies. These are so hard to find. You can only find them, at least in my area, you can only find them this time of year. Then otherwise the only thing I can find for calla lilies are like the colored hybrid ones. And I just really, really like the white ones. And over here, I have two more cow lily plants, one there and one there. And so you can see how wonderfully they do in this garden bed, at least over on that side. What I'm planning to do is I'm planning to bring the three that I bought kind of over here, maybe one here, one here. I don't know. I'm just going to kind of kind of swoop them around the crepe myrtle tree right here. These I actually divided from one plant. So if I hadn't divided it, it would be an even bigger cow lily. And it's just they're just really happy in this garden bed. So I'm happy to have those to plant. Then I have the one that I'm worried about with the weather, but you know, I will cover it if I need to. And this is heliotrope or common heliotrope. And then I did see a tag on these, on one of these, here it is. Fragrant delight is what they're calling it. Heliotrope Fragrant Delight. And that's a good name for these because these smell so good. They're not totally open yet, but they will be soon. And I just, I just love heliotrope so much. It's one of my favorite plants in the garden. It's the type of thing where you can walk by and you can smell it and it'll stop you in your tracks. That's actually how I found out about this plant. I was in Carmel with my husband and we were walking, we were looking at all the beautiful houses and the beautiful gardens. And then I smelled something and it was like, what is that? And you know, I was that crazy person 
and I was sniffing every plant to see what it was and it ended up being heliotrope and I just I just love it so much then I have angel wing senecio I've never actually grown this variety before um, so I'm excited to try it out last year I did have some new look dusty miller right here and I really like that silver color right there so I'm gonna try it in that spot then very um what am I trying to say? Very controversial. <laughs> so I'm, I am going to plant this Creeping Jenny as a ground cover right there in the corner right there. And I did get a lot of comments from you saying, don't do it. It's going to take over, you know, and I totally appreciate those comments, but I don't really mind if it takes over in this garden bed right here, because I mean, for one thing, it's totally, um, isolated from the rest of my garden you know and I'm just planning to put it right here and if it if it spreads I'm totally cool with that because right now I have this lamium as my ground cover right here and you can see I mean it's beautiful I love the color it just doesn't spread as well as I like it to it's just not as happy in this spot as I want it to be kind of same thing in my backyard underneath my limelight hydrangeas the lamium is just I don't know, it's just kind of struggling a little bit. It's not It's not spreading at all. Um, and if anything, it spreads and then it kind of dies. I just think that we're a little too dry here. I don't know. So if the Creeping Jenny takes over, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I know that's controversial, but I'm okay with that. So I'm planning just to put the Creeping Jenny here. And then in between, I have five of these it's another kind of tender plant i have five of these super tunia blue skies oh look at that so i've grown these before and they i think they do better in part shade that is totally my opinion i think they are a full sun oh no it says full sun to part sun right i have grown these both in full sun and both in part sun or really I would say part shade, honestly. And I think that the color on the blooms look way prettier when it's in a teeny bit more shade. When I grew these in full sun, it was almost like the blooms um, bleached out a little too much. And I, I just didn't like it as much. It was, it was more of a sun tender plant as opposed to like a super tunia bubble gum or, um, I don't know. Uh, oh, Royal Velvet. Like Royal Velvet can handle the sun no problem and it doesn't bleach out at all. But I just feel like the Blue Skies does a little bit better, at least in my area, with a little bit of shade. So I'm just planning to kind of plant those in between the Creeping Jenny, to kind of just like that. Now, these I have not gotten from the garden center. These I bought last fall and I've been holding them over. <laughs> for months and taking care of them and they got aphids and I've been like taking care of the aphids and oh my goodness it was a lot to be able to have access to these plants at this time of year because Proven Winners grows their plants in two places and I'm not going to say them right like somewhere in the Midwest north of the Midwest and then also in I'm not going to say it right either. New Hampshire or something like that. Anyway, they just grow it in a regular greenhouse. They don't use grow lights or anything like that. So they are at the mercy of the sun and the weather in those areas. So because here in California, we get bright and, you know, sunny and our last frost is in February sometimes, you know, like we're ready to go. We're ready to start planting in March, but they're not ready. Their, their plants aren't ready. So I tried it this past year. It was, a lot of work <laughs> to keep these guys alive and happy all through the winter season. It was, oh, I don't know if I'm going to do it again next year. I think I might just be patient and wait a month until I can get my hands on all of these. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of work. So I'm happy that I have them. Um, just, just really think about what you're committing to if you're planning to do that. If you live in California or the West Coast or um, like Florida or something like that and you're thinking about doing what I did, it. It, it took a lot of work <laughs> for sure real quick before I get started I had to do a little bit of a bloom break because look at my daffodils oh they look so so pretty you guys I need to get down at this level so you can really see them they are just 
they're just going crazy right now. And so this is a blend from colorblends.com and they're supposed to be, it's like a sequence of blooms. So they're not all going to bloom at one time. They're going to kind of just keep coming and going so that the blooms will last a lot longer. And so far I am enjoying this mix so much. Look at this one. Look at that. I need to come out here and take tons and tons of pictures. All right, so I am gonna get started planting. My plan is to use insane amounts of compost everywhere in my garden. Now that I have the mulch taken up and I have access to the native soil, um, my plan is just, just basically amend everywhere I can with compost. And I do have a lot of compost uh, in my side yard right now. So I have to go get a couple buckets of that. Um, uh, you do want to have, your goal is to have at least 5% of your soil be organic matter or compost. And here in California, I don't know about other states, but here in California, our native soil uh, generally has only about 2% of organic matter. So you basically can never add too much compost. So anytime you're planting anything or anytime you have access to your bare soil, put some compost on, your soil will be super happy and your plants will be super happy. So I'm gonna go grab that and then we will get started planting. I found. Oh, it's so cute. She's staying perfectly still. Oh, that's so sweet. Hummingbird nest. I thought this was the hummingbird nest, but that must be a bird nest. That's definitely a hummingbird nest because we could see the hummingbird. Oh, I love it. So this must be the hummingbird that kept trying to come into my garage, protecting its territory or something. all done and I am loving how it's looking it's I know you guys were cringing as I was putting in that creeping Jenny but I just think it's gonna look so beautiful and I am totally fine with pulling it out you know I had people say the same thing to me about lamium you know and saying lamium was gonna get everywhere and it really didn't I'm sure creeping Jenny is gonna get a little bit more crazy but I'm I, that's kind of the look I want in here so very exciting I'm sure you guys saw the gardeners were here or they still are here they are we got a dumpster and then a big pile of mulch that's our black mulch right there so I'm getting really really excited because I think it looks so much better getting that black mulch out um just because the black mulch it was just dirty it was time to you know to uh 
replace it to add a little bit more. And I just think that having some nice brown mulch, I think, I think my garden is going to be so much happier. So let me show you a look at what I did planting in the crepe myrtle garden bed. All right. So here it is. You can see I have no mulch still, and I'm not gonna put any mulch until, I'm gonna go to the uh, the garden center today, either the garden center or like Home Depot or Lowe's, and I'm gonna look for bagged mulch because what I want is I wanna find some mulch that I can buy in bags because I'm planning to like refresh it throughout the year. Um, as opposed to with the black mulch, we just get that in bulk and we get a big pile of it delivered and then put it all over the place. I'm gonna try a different technique this year and just kind of see how it goes. So, you can see here, I have my Super Tunia Blue Skies, two blooms, that's it, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, so you guys saw I was using the Proven Winners Twist and Plant Auger that actually is made by Power Planter. I don't know if you all knew that. Um, I didn't know that, which is why I'm saying it, but the Twist and Plant Auger and, and Power Planter Augers, they're the same thing. One of them's just white and the, the Twist and Plant is sized exactly for the four inch cans for the Proven Winners Annuals, which is amazing. And it was a piece of cake I mean, literally, you just drill that in and then drop the plants in. It takes two seconds. So anyways, I got one, two, three, four, five of the Supertunia Blue Skies right there. The Creeping Jenny all around it. And then three of the Cow Lilies. Look at how pretty that looks. So excited about that. So one, two, and then I tucked one here in between my foxtail ferns. I, this one might get a little too much sun. I don't know. I just really love it when plants are planted like that and kind of coming up through other plants. I just think it's so beautiful. So I'm gonna try that one there and see and see how it does. Then I have my heliotrope. So I got one there and then four more right here. These are full sun to part sun. So I think that they're gonna be perfectly happy here. Really, really good. The only thing I'm kind of worried about is um, the angel wing senecio. Um, this one might be full sun, which yeah, this is not quite a full sun spot. So, you know, I'm kind of pushing it there, but we'll just, we'll just see how it does. And if I end up having to move it, then that's totally fine. So yeah, so this is what I got done today pretty proud of myself. I'm happy. I can't wait for it all to grow in. Like it all just looks like kind of little plants right now, but oh my goodness, once it starts once it starts getting warm, it's going to be crazy beautiful, I'm sure. All right, you guys. So that is it for my first official planting day of the 2023 season. <laughs> might be a little bit early. I might have pushed it a little bit, but I'm not worried about it. It is a beautiful day. And if I have to come out and cover the heliotrope and the supertunias with a little bit of harvest guard, totally fine with that. So you know, watch me. Don't follow exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, I am definitely pushing it here and I get it, but that's all right. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Um, it was fun for me. I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy my new plants. And then Jason and I are moving on to a new project. Um, so you'll probably see me in the same outfit in a video that's being posted next week. So just bear with me. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.